Greetings and salutations, everybody. My name is Hafro, and I watched Dune and IMAX. Let's talk about it. Hello, everybody. A little bit different video today. Uh, as much as I wanted to film <laughs> my reaction to Dune and watch it on, like, HBO Max or something, I, I really felt that uh, that would be a disservice to the movie. Um, Many of you probably don't know, but I am the biggest Dune fan. It is my favorite book series of all time, and I have been <laughs> waiting uh, over a year for this movie to come out. And uh, luckily, there is like an IMAX theater near me, so I was able to take uh, my girlfriend and I to go see it last night. And whew, man, that was, it, it's amazing, for sure. Uh, so this this is kind of talking about why you should see it in IMAX. Uh, I, I, in general, you should see the movie regardless. But please, please, if you do go see it, uh, go see it in the theaters. Uh, I want to make sure that this movie does really well. It is the best adaptation of Dune ever. There are some issues with it. You know, as a Dune fan, there are some things that I saw that I was like, why did, why did that happen? Or why wasn't this in there? Uh, but for the most part, it is the best adaptation. And, it, and it's just this great epic sci-fi uh, movie and a lot of people will go see it and maybe compare it to like other sci-fi movies when at, in actuality sci-fi movies like Star Wars and stuff actually took from Dune uh, as opposed to the other way which um, people who aren't familiar with with Dune uh, would probably think the other way so um, yeah so to start off if you are interested in seeing my like reaction or thoughts about Dune, I could do a reaction, which would be like a second reaction, and I could kind of talk and explain about what's happening uh, in each scene. If anyone's interested in that, please leave a comment down below, and I, and I will see if I can get that out there if people are interested. If not, we're just going to talk about the movie right now. This is going to be kind of a spoiler review, so if you haven't seen the movie, please uh, go out and see it. Uh, I'll try and keep it as spoiler-free for like the first little bit so those of you who aren't interested uh you know you can kind of glimpse some things and then uh later down in the reaction in this in this review i will uh talk more spoilery so to start um dune is about a young boy played by timothy chalamet uh who is called paul atreides and uh interestingly enough it's so hard to talk about dune without talking about the overall uh arcing story of it um, so he plays this young boy and he's kind of like the lead character and he and his family have been, um, told by this emperor that kind of rules over these, uh, ruling houses of this great giant universe because each house basically rules a planet. Um, and he was told that they are going to go and be the fiefdom for the planet Arrakis, Dune. And in Dune, there is this thing called the Spice Melange which gives people long life. It is basically like this miracle spice that, that improves everything about your uh, body, mind, spirit, all that stuff. Um, several things this uh, spice can do, for instance, um, the space navigation that the guild navigators in the movie, uh, they can navigate through space using this basically, they fold space, which they don't really go into it in the movie a lot, um, and they don't even show it, but... That's how you can get from like point A to point B without any danger, without running into stars or planets or anything like that. Because like if you look at other films that have things like hyperspace and stuff like that, in hyperspace you're actually traveling through um, you know space at a very high velocity, faster than light, obviously, and uh, the computer is basically generating a, a safe path through all that stuff. Whereas in Dune, with the folding of space, they're literally instead of taking you, the person, from point A to point B. They're taking space itself and folding it together so that you go from one point to the next point in like a split second. And it's amazing. And I'm sad that you don't actually get to see it in the film. That's kind of one of the things that kind of saddened me about it. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things that Spice can do. Also, there is a group called the Bene Gesserit who Paul's mother is a part of. Um, Paul's mother is very much a mystery in this movie. Uh, the Bene Gesserit are very mysterious. They don't really go into a whole lot about the Bene Gesserit uh, um, women and, and uh, what their group is about. They kind of talk about it later down the line in the movie, but um, there's this kind of overarching thing about is Paul's mother 
uh, truly like for the Atreides? Is she acting toward, more towards her uh, Bene Gesserit training and her people? And there's this whole thing throughout the movie about Paul being this uh, savior of the planet uh, Arrakis of Dune, of the, the Fremen people who are the uh, natives there. And it's just the visuals in this movie, oh my god. Like, I know a lot of it is computer generated and you can kind of tell that, but it, it's so brilliantly well done and it's the most epic sand Dune I've ever seen. Because, like, I've one of my favorite Dune adaptations is actually the sci fi series, which I think very much faithful. A little few weird things here and there about it, but uh, overall, one of like the best adaptation until now. Um, of Dune and the thing about that adaptation is the budget was so small that they actually filmed it on a lot and they had these background just like pictures almost like a backdrop of Dune to kind of show the vastness of it whereas in this movie with the CG generation and stuff you can show that great vastness of the desert planet and it is so well done um, the designs for the ships the, the ornithopters, which are the things that they travel um, in on the surface. Uh, everything is just really well done, really thought out. Um, and then, uh, as well as the costumes, the costumes are very minimal. When, when you read Frank Herbert's Dune, uh, he doesn't really go into much detail about, like, you know, this person's wearing a, a black cloak and it has this insignia on it or whatever like that. Like, there are some things, but he doesn't, like, go into super, super intense detail. He leaves it up to the imagination of the reader to of what they feel the person looks like um so aside from like you know the olive skin tone of say chani played by zendaya and stuff like that he doesn't really go into a whole lot of detail of it and uh so i really think that the minimalistic approach that Denis took with uh things like the still suits um the look of the Bene Gesserit women in kind of like the all black and the hoods uh some other adaptations have made it way out there and way too fluff and so uh, the, the costume design, the set design, everything was amazing. The fight choreography was great. Uh, it's, really, it's really interesting because like most movies are like sword fighting, but there is uh, a lot of like kind of knife work in this movie because the Fremen people use what's called a Chris knife, which is made out of the uh, tooth of a giant sandworm. Of course, a lot of people who haven't seen Dune or don't know of Dune are going to be like, sandworms isn't that like tremors or something well <laughs> that's kind of where tremors you know got their little bit from is because of the sandworms of dune you could take a look at uh like tatooine the sand people the fremen like all of these things are from dune that are that are uh, influenced in um uh, and and looked at in other movies and stuff but yeah so the set design all that stuff great i i think the acting was amazing uh, Timothy Chalamet does uh, such a good Paul, and he looks the part too, because Paul is supposed to be 16 years old. Some of the other adaptations, like the the 1980s version, was was um, you know he's just too old. You need to have an actor that can play the part, but also look young enough to where he can look like a 16 year old boy, um, who then grows up to become this this person that uh, uh, they they are referring to in the movie. You don't actually get to see a whole lot of. Zendaya, Zendaya, Zendaya's character, Chani, in the movie, she's, she's seen mostly through flashbacks, or not flashbacks, but uh, dreams that, that Paul's having up until like the end when you actually get to meet her. Um, I think I was a little hesitant for, uh, I can't remember the actress's name, who's playing Lady Jessica. I know a lot of people were like all for her, but uh, when I, I've seen her in some movies, and uh, when I heard about the casting and I, and I saw her, I was like, you know, I was a little hesitant just because I, I wasn't as familiar with, with her. and uh, But she does a great job as Lady Jessica. I think, um, okay, Rebecca Ferguson. <laughs> so yeah, Rebecca Ferguson, who played Lady Jessica, I think she did an amazing job. Uh, Oscar Isaac as Duke Leto was so good. Um, although I do really enjoy uh, the sci-fi versions of Duke Leto. Um, I do think he does, does a great job. I think they added a lot of scenes between him and um, Timothy's Paul. Um, to kind of show that that father son dynamic, which I really really appreciate, because a lot of times this book is so massive that uh, sometimes it's hard to to have those small moments uh, when you're trying to build and create this world. So I think he did an amazing job. Josh Brolin as Gurney Halleck, I thought was great. I did. I'm I'm sad that we didn't get to hear him play the Balasset. I was looking forward to to some of that, hearing him sing maybe. 
Maybe we'll get it in the part two if that ever comes out. But uh, yeah. And I also, uh, I really enjoy Jason Momoa's character as Duncan Idaho. I was a little hesitant as well for him uh, as that character because um, uh, typically he's not what you would think of for uh, Duncan Idaho if you've read the books. Um, but I think he portrayed it really well. He showed the loyalty that Duncan has. They don't really go a whole lot into Duncan's backstory, sadly. Um, but uh, I do th- I do get that sense of uh, why he's so loyal to the Atreides because I, I know why. Um, so yeah, I think he did a great job. And um, for those of you that have read the books, you know that he might come back. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything about the movie, but uh, he, uh, he definitely... Hopefully, well, if this movie does well and we get a part two and then we get, you know, maybe Children of Dune and all that stuff, maybe we'll get to see uh, Duncan Idaho again. Um, Javier Bardem, you don't get to see a, lo- a whole lot of him in the film as Stilgar, but I do think he does. It, he's, he's, he's a good Stilgar. He definitely played the kind of uh, silent yet knowledgeable uh, leader uh, very well. Um, this man who's lived in the desert for his whole life. Uh, I, I just thought he did, he did an amazing job with, with bringing that kind of softness and stillness, yet that, that piercing, uh, not, not venom, but uh, danger to him. Uh, I thought that was really well. And um, let's see, uh, Stellan, Stargar, uh, Stellan Skarsgård as the Baron Harkonnen. Ooh, man. I, I think this is my favorite version of Baron Harkonnen by far in any Dune adaptation. Um, the original uh, David Fincher movie was just kind of too out there. Uh, they, they made him look grotesque, but they made it through like doing weird pustules and stuff on his face instead of, uh, you know, um, how it is in, in the books. Because in the books, he's just this very large man. He's, he's a, a glutton. He is all about um, prestige and, and um, a life of luxury. And so through that, he has fattened himself up he he is so you know he he is large enough to where he can't really walk on his own he has this kind of floating device which you see attached to his back and i think that they did a very good job with portraying that floating device as well because a lot of times uh it's not how it is in the books and it's just this device that like moves him around and stuff and it's it's so much different because it doesn't really move him that much it's more of a just like a a flotation thing to kind of help him uh support his weight so i thought he was just so menacing with his looks and and the way the, the way the setting was and just the little additions to him to make him look kind of uh, uh, gross and stuff. Not not necessarily like how the other versions have been. And he just he just even though he's this this large man, he's still very imposing. And just his voice and the tonality and stuff. It just it just really plays on the like this man would give the order to kill you in any moment and it's just it's just so good um so yeah i i do think that this is the best adaptation of dune i'm definitely gonna watch it again probably on hbo max at some point uh just to to kind of you know watch it again and, and see those things that i missed but um for those of you that are unfamiliar with the books i i still think you'll get enjoyment out of it my girlfriend um she has never read the books I kind of told her a little bit about the story before going into it, but I didn't tell her a whole lot. And so she had a lot of questions for me when we got out of the movie um, about things that she was seeing and some confusion that she had. But overall, like, (laughs) the way she was talking to me about it was she was talking how um, at first she was like, I don't know about this. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. And then she got, like, at one point she got really invested in the movie. And I was kind of looking over at her during some of the, like, bigger scenes or the battle stuff. And she was like, you know... Uh, covering her mouth like oh no and, and all this stuff so, so I could tell she was really getting into it so um, and, and she's a very hard person to kind of get into certain things uh, so uh, if that's any indication I, I, I hope that those of you who aren't familiar with the movie uh, do go out and see it and maybe even pick up the book because the book is amazing um, and of course this is only part one the Denis did the smart move because it's like a 900 page book and he took, uh, you know, half of that. It, the movie ends about halfway through the book. Um, and he filmed the first half and found a good, like, end point to where it would be part two going on to the next, to the rest of the book. So I really, really hope this, this happens. 
that's another reason why I want people to go see it in theaters. I want them to, you know, support it by spending the money to go to the theater so that, you know, the, the studio can see, hey, this is worth us putting money into a part two. Um, even when the movie comes, like the title credits go, it's like doing part one. So uh, I highly, highly recommend this movie. Um, you know, it does have its faults, but overall it is the best adaptation of Dune. And I really, really think that uh, um, anyone, especially a sci-fi fan, if you're one of my uh, Expanse viewers, you will definitely, definitely love this movie. So yeah, make sure to go out and see it. And uh, definitely, um, I'm not sure if I would say it's a perfect 10 out of 10 for me. It's definitely a 9 out of 10, but uh, yeah, amazing. So uh, thank you for <laughs> thank you so guys so much for, for listening to me ramble on about this movie. Uh, if you enjoy movie reviews like this and want to see more of them, leave a comment down below. Make sure to please like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you are not. Uh, so yeah, appreciate it and we will see you guys with the next video.